Your album, Fear Itself, turned 25 here soon. Um, take me back to uh, your next up to bat after Souls of Mischief. What was it like to say, hey, you up next? What, what kind of mindset did you That's have? That's how it was because we just got thrown into a, a commercial system or a corporate system. But as we sat around the room as a crew and stuff, it was never like that. We all had our stuff recorded at the same time, and they just chose who they wanted to present first but, uh, by marketability. Obviously, if I looking back, the songs are more marketable. They got four different tries or four different, you know, it's like a boy group with multiple personalities and, you know, handsome young men. They felt like they could get more of a push out than I was just trying to be grimy with a big head of dreadlocks, <laughs> trying to be like hardcore, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so they still respected my image, but they felt like putting out the Souls of Mr. first would put us, push us forward. And I think, I think the Souls, yeah, the Souls did sign their deal first and I got my deal second. So they actually decided they wanted to get me second, Daryl. Yeah. So that wasn't part of the plan to go after Souls of Mischief and it's kind of the label's idea to place you guys who was yeah, going next. Yeah, yeah. So what was the concept behind the title, Fear Itself? Ain't nothing to fear but fear itself. So I was like, fuck it, this is something to fear. This is fear itself. You right. know what I'm saying? As far as MCs and we talk about that battle, uh, that battle spirit was concerned. I was like, if it ain't nothing to fear but fear itself, then this is fear itself. Your first uh, single release, That's How It Was and That's How It Is. Mm -hmm. uh, was that your idea to throw that out first as your introduction to yeah, the world? Yeah, I don't know if they even... I mean, looking back on it, if I was an A&R or somebody sitting in an uh, office and, I, and one of my artists turned in that album to me, I'd be in the same position they was in. Like, okay, I know it's hot, like, you know what I'm saying, but this ain't really, like, mass music, you know what I'm saying? And so... They just let me give it the shot we wanted to give it. Like, okay, well, all of them knew the skills was there, and but that was like, but it's not like, you no know, blow up stuff. Right. So they just rolled with it, like, okay, which one you want to put? I'm like, that's how it is. And they rocked with it, like, okay, that's how it is. Me, oh, my, oh, was my second single, I think. No, didn't, didn't mean, mean to. to. And yeah. then it was me, oh, my, was the third single. Didn't mean yeah. to. Was that your idea or their idea? Yeah, that was my idea. I mean, no, really, all these ideas are collective. But again, I'm just giving them some credit. With an album like that, without obviously strong singles on it, you know what I'm saying, you just are left to shuffle through what you got. And shuffling through that record, Didn't Mean To, was one of the most, you know, it was one of the records that had a repetitive to it. it and it had a storyline that people could follow easily. It didn't get you lost in rapping rap stuff, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, it ain't my fault that your girl got caught. Right. And then later, what's the name, took it. And was like, it ain't my fault. I was like, didn't uh, I just do that song? It's right, good, but right. It's good, you know. Third single, Me Oh My Oh. What was the idea and thought process behind that? Uh, I guess that, uh, good question. Because I filmed that video in Atlanta at a Freaknik back when they used to have Freaknik. Uh, and I guess the label was still excited about doing stuff. And they even signed me to do a second record. So it was optimistic. As far as creates creatively, it just was the next song that I could put out. Even though it was abstract, mm -hmm. it had a storyline that some could kind of follow. It was about me growing up in Oakland, me, oh, my, oh, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I was just talking about my childhood and things that I encountered as a young man trying to stand on my square, you feel me? So, so it just was a natural progression to that song. What do you remember most about the uh, session with Sophia? The session or the uh, the, the battle? Uh, let's, let's, we're gonna talk about the yeah, battle in yeah. a minute. The battle was after mm -hmm. the session, right? Yeah. Okay, so the I session. I remember that session, um, I swear to God. It was a good session. He was my homie, and we was again, we was friends. And when he came in to say that verse, every time he spit it, he spit it a different way. And to me, that was real odd because I I was used to having a format like I would write where the one was on top of the certain word, so I know that that word would hit on the one every time. Mm -hmm. He had an abstract style to when he every time the engineer started to beat. 
he would say the same lyrics on the beat a different way. So to me, I thought that was a lack of control or he, like he didn't have it down pat. If you can't say it the same way every time, how you saying it different every time? Honestly, people was like, that verse killed my album. I didn't even really feel that verse, but he was my partner. You know what I'm saying? Straight up, he was my partner, but it wasn't like he was just like dumb gassing to me or nothing. Right. But I mean, I have, and then I had people who was like, that was the dopest verse on the album, <laughs> including all of my work. So I was like, dang, it must be something I'm missing. Because when I hear that, I don't necessarily hear like the dopest verse on the album. But don't get it twisted. That was one of my dogs. Like we was real close. And I'm a transparent dude. And I didn't have no time. It wasn't whack, it was raw. It was just abstract, so abstract that it didn't have any mathematical uh, consistency, you know what I'm saying? It was just like different. Right. So I was just like, leave it. Because that's how you spit your shit. You, we thugging out, this is cool. Let's, let's just put it out like this. So, you know, I actually gave him a shout out. I didn't even rap on that song. Right. I just was like, I'm putting you on my record and you going on my record because I want you to come out with your own record. You know what I'm saying? So that was his first introduction. He to... had one on Digital Underground somewhere, supposedly, but hip hop didn't learn about him to my record. You know what I'm saying? Right, so sidebar. So you do the song with Safir. What mm -hmm. made you guys go into the battle? Because he invited me into a studio session to get on his record and I wasn't available. Mm -hmm. He had called me for a couple, I, I think he might have, to give him credit, he might have called me a few days in advance, but that ain't how I remember it. He called me earlier that night and I was like, all right, I'm gonna try to make it over there. And then by the time the studio session had trans started trying, I hit him like, y'all ain't gonna be able to make it, I'm doing something. But I was like, can you write something else and we get on something else and get on that on another day. And he caught feelings from that. And he was like, I, I acted like I shunned him to the side, but really I felt he was just taking advantage of an opportunity to be like on some, try to do like 50 did Ja Rule back in the day, <laughs> but it didn't work. You know what I'm saying? Like try to just take advantage of a, a, a reason to make a beef and then try to make that beef be the biggest thing in the world. And I was like, seriously? Right. Like before all of this stuff, that was the first battle when somebody showed up with their press cameras. Mm. Like I thought it was all street and all hood. And when we got to the radio station, they was like, would you guys mind doing a face off, face to face? With I was like, are y'all serious? <laughs> I was like, this is this is acting? I, I was thinking this is all real. Right. Like, why are we gonna do a face off? We ain't getting paid no big ass purse. This is big, you know? But it's good. Did you guys ever uh, reconcile after all that? Oh, no. definitely. Okay. Yeah, that was years ago. I mean, that was young. You know, for a minute it was still, because he had crossed me, so I don't ever fuck with nobody who just outright cross you for no reason. Right. But. You can let bygones be bygones. When people do things that they tried to spite you, didn't work, and it's, it was long in the past, why even linger on that? You can kind of like chuckle and smirk when that person in your presence, like, right. we have my video shoot. Or I invited him uh, on my album, and not facetiously, it was just out of humble, like, yo, let's just do a song together, you know what I'm saying? Right. And we did one on a record I did with Fat Cat. Okay. Called uh, Ron John Bovey. Check it out. Yeah. Cool. 